Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eva Marils. I'm the Dean of Engineering here at the University of Melbourne, and it's a real pleasure to welcome you here to the last Dean's Lecture of the year. Uh, today's lecture is sponsored across the Faculty of Science, Faculty of Medicine, and Faculty of Engineering because of its topic. Let me just introduce Dr. Devra Davis, who doesn't probably need an awful lot of introduction. But Dr. Devra Davis is a visiting professor of medicine at the Hebrew University Hadassah Medical School and also in Turkey at the Ondokus Mayis University. She's an expert studying the electromagnetic radiation from mobile phones and wireless transmitting devices at present. She was the founding director of the Center for Environmental Oncology, which was the first such center in the world and was established at the University of Pittsburgh Cancer Institute. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Psychology, a Master of Arts in Sociology. She has a PhD in Science from the University of Chicago, and she has a Master of Public Health in Epidemiology from the John Hopkins University. A lot of degrees. <laughs> she has authored more than 200 publications, and she has been published in Lancet and the Journal of American Medical Associations, which are some of the top journals in the field of medical research. And she, of course, has publications in Scientific American and the New York Times. Deborah Davis, we're very pleased to listen to the truth about mobile phone and wireless radiation. All yours, please. Through this in any great detail, there are a lot of important questions to be asked about mobile phone radiation today. Without any the microwave oven, the mobile phone, the cordless phone, the Wi-Fi monitor, the baby monitor, they all use the same frequency. They differ in power. They also differ because mobile phones and Wi-Fi devices emit pulsed microwave radiation. It's the pulse, not the power, that appears to be biologically most important. The pulse that is erratic and irregular, like for thousands of minutes a month, for dozens of hours a week, over a lifetime, that irregular pulsed signal may be much more biologically important. And in fact, the continuous wave signals have a lot of therapeutic effects as are being applied in medicine today. This visualization from my colleague at the University of Athens shows you the variation in frequency, in amplitude, in pulse. All of these variables influence the properties a signal have and how it can affect a biological system. This is just to show you what happens in a four 